Hello sports fans and baseball fans. Today I got a Stratomatic baseball game for you and this is unlike one that I've ever done. This is going to be the all-time Chicago White Sox taking on the all-time Detroit Tigers. And you can see the lineups are across the uh, field here. Uh, we will be playing in Detroit, but I have some uh, some caveats to put out. First of all, some of the cards that I have to use are from seasons um, where Stratomatic made the advanced version of the card, but they hadn't yet done baseball or uh, ballpark effects. So we are not going to use ballpark effects. We are just going to read the result off the card in instances where there was a base or a, a ballpark effect, like a single or a home run next to it. We will just read whatever it says. So if it's a home run and it has a home run ballpark effect next to it, it'll just be read as a home run. If it's a fly ball with a home run ballpark effect next to it, it'll be a fly ball. Uh, because, as I said, there are cards uh, like the 1979 cards that don't have those designations, and it isn't really fair to use them for the players that have them and not use them for the players that don't have them. So I'm just going to make, I'm just going to say that they we're not doing that. Um, also, if you're a fan of the White Sox, if you're a fan of the Tigers, and you say, where is this guy? Why didn't this guy play? Why was this guy in the lineup? Really, you can say that about any team in the history of baseball that you would make an all-star or, or an all-time team for. So we're, uh, I mean, we can debate that in the, in the, uh, you know, the comment section. If you want to leave a comment, somebody was left out that you think should have been left out or somebody was in the starting lineup that you don't think should have been in the starting lineup. That's fine. You can make that comment. I'm always happy to, uh, talk about it, but we will get on with the introductions of the teams. Uh, the visiting team is the White Sox. And so we will go down their lineup. Their lineup will be Luke Appling at shortstop. And there is Luke Appling. The second batter will be Shoeless Joe Jackson. And he'll play left field. And there he is. The next batter is Big Frank Thomas. And he'll be the DH today for the White Sox. Followed by um, first baseman Paul Canerco. And there's Canerco. Then Eddie Collins, the second baseman, will be batting fifth. Chet Lemon, the center fielder, will be batting sixth. Then you've got Carlton Fisk batting seventh. He'll be the catcher. Lewis Robert will be in right field batting eighth, and that's another caveat I have. He only plays center field, but I'm using the stratomatic rule that he can play any outfield at the same rating that he was in center, and he was a center field one, so he will be a right field one. And again, that is a stratomatic rule, so I'm going to utilize it. And then the last batter will be Robin High Ventura, the third baseman today for the White Sox. So going to the Tigers lineup, we'll go down that lineup. Uh, batting up here, up here you can see we've got... Um, Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou Whitaker, leading off and batting second, or batting first. Batting second will be Ty Cobb in center field, followed by Harry Heilman, the DH today. Then Miggy, Miguel Cabrera will be at first base, batting in the cleanup spot. Bob Fothergill will be the left fielder. Then uh, batting sixth will be Al Kaline, and he'll be in right field. After Kaline, we have Lance Parrish, the catcher, today for the Detroit Tigers. Then George Kell, the third baseman, batting eighth. And then finally, Alan Trammell will be the shortstop. And that is the starting lineups for the all-time White Sox and the all-time Tigers. And pitching today, the pitching matchup will be Billy Pierce of the uh, White Sox. And we will be using Billy Pierce's 
1955 card. In 1955, he was 15 and 10 with a 197 earned run average. And for the Tigers will be Mr. Denny McLean. Now, I have the 1969 Denny McLean, which is not the 1968 Denny McLean, because the 1968 set that I have is the original 1968 set, which was not set up for advanced play. So, uh, but I do have the 69 recreated set, and that is set up for advanced play. So in 1969, though, Denny McLean was still very good. He was 24 and 9 with a 280 earned run average and pitched 325 innings and allowed 288 hits over that time period. So, with all of that out of the way, we are ready to play some baseball. So, let's get on with the game now that the introductions and everything is out of the way. And that means that we're going to lead off with Mr. Luke Appling. And he is batting against Denny McLean. Mr. McLean. And that is a 4-3 and he's batting right. And that's going to be a fly ball to the... It's going to be a uh, fly ball to right field X. And the right fielder is a 1... E, something like E2. That is a 1, so let's see what that is. That's going to be a fly ball B. That's what I might have thought it would be. So, a fly ball 9, F9. And that brings to the, to the plate Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe Jack. And he gets a 210, and he and he's batting against a righty, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field. So another F9, two away, and up steps Frankie Thomas. Frank Thomas, the big hurt, gets a 5-6, and that's going to be a strikeout. So the all-time White Sox go one, two, three to Denny McLean, and we go to the bottom of the first. And that brings up Lou Whitaker. Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou, leading off for them. One, seven, and that uh, he's going up against a lefty, and that's going to be a walk. So sweet Lou is aboard, and he's at first base. And we've got Billy Pierce walking a guy. So the next batter is Ty Cobb. It doesn't get any easier. It's Ty Cobb next, 4-7, and he's batting left, and that's going to be a double, 1-2, to two, and that's actually a single double asterisk. So a single double asterisk um, puts uh, Lou Whitaker at third and Tyrus Cobb at first. So he's going to get a single. And then uh, an advancement over to third by Lou Whitaker and Harry Heilman is the bat. Harry Heilman gets a 2-9, and he's batting right against a righty. And that's going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. But that will score Whitaker. And uh, so that's going to be a 6-4-3 double play with an RBI. Well, not it won't be an RBI on his record, but um, but a run comes in, and Miguel Cabrera is the batter, and he gets a five-six batting right, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Cabrera strikes out. That's the first strikeout for Billy Pierce. But Detroit struck for a run there. <laughs> We go to the top of the second, where Paul Canerco will be the batter. And he gets a 110 against a righty. That is going to be a ground ball uh, to the second baseman. So he goes out 4-3. One away, and... Eddie Collins, the second baseman for the White Sox, gets a 3-8. That's going to be a ground ball to second base. 
That's two down, and they have gotten nobody aboard against McLean yet, and Chet Lemon is the center fielder, and he gets a 1-8, and that is going to be a single. So let's go find Chet Lemon in this uh, lineup here. And there he is. And he is aboard. So Chet Lemon is on with a single. That's the first hit allowed by McLean. With two down. And Carlton Fisk up. And Fisk gets a 5-7 batting right. And that's going to be a single double asterisk. That'll move Chet Lemon over to third. And Fisk is the... Uh, Fisk is at first base with his single. And uh, so let's move. We got to put Lemon over here. Fisk here with the single. And the second hit given up by McLean. And Lewis Robert is the batter. The center field. Or no, he is the, he is the right fielder. Or no, wait, wait. Yeah. Yes, the right fielder. And he is right. And that is a 1-9, and that is going to be a hit by pitch. So that will load the bases. Fisk will go to second, and Lewis Robert will go to first. And uh, McLean hits a batter. And now the bases are full for Robin High Ventura. And he gets a 5-5 five, five batting left. And that is going to be a pop out to first base. So the White Sox threatened there, but they got nothing. They come away with nothing. And we'll put all their guys back on the bench. We'll go to the bottom of the second. We'll go back to zero out. And for Detroit, Bob Fothergill is the batter. And he gets a 6-5 batting right against Pierce. That's going to be a strikeout. Or wait a minute, batting right. That's going to be a fly ball center. So Father Gill flies out to eight, one away. Bringing up Al Kalon. And he gets a 5-5 batting right. That's going to be a strikeout. So K-Line strikes out. That is the second K for Pierce today. And Lance Parrish is the batter. He's the catcher. He gets a 4-7 batting right. That's going to be an out, and it will be a line out to second. Line out four. The Tigers go a lot quicker in the second inning. We go to the top of the third, where the White Sox are trailing 1-0. And we're back at the top of the lineup with Luke Appling as the batter. And he gets a 5-9 batting right. That is going to be a fly ball to right field. And that's exactly what he did the first time. So he has two fly outs to right. There is one down and Joe Jackson, Shoeless Joe Jackson gets a 2-8. And that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. He goes out 4-3, two away, Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas gets a 5-7 batting right. That is going to be a single. So we got to go find Frank Thomas in this mess. And uh, let's see, I think he's right here. There he is. There's the big hurt. And he's on first base. So, and what was that? 5-7, that was a single. That is the third hit that McLean has allowed on the day. Canerco is. Canerco gets a 3-12, and that's going to be a single to center field. So Canerico gets a single. We've got the 90s White Sox connection getting two guys on. 
And Frank Thomas was a rock on the bases, so we're not even going to think about trying to extend him an extra an extra base. But it is four hits allowed by Denny McLean. And Eddie Collins is the batter. And he gets a 4-5 batting left, and that's going to be a line out to shortstop. So the White Sox come away with nothing in the third. We go to the bottom of the third. We take the White Sox players off the bases because they're going back into the field, except for Thomas, who was the DH. And that brings up George Kell for Detroit, his first at bat of the day. And he gets a 5-8 batting right, and that's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. That is Eddie Collins, though. And uh, Collins is a 1E23. That is an 8. I'd be willing to hope that it's uh, an out. That is an 8. So no, it's got to be on the uh, E rating. And now an E23, you don't know. So let's see. 4, E23, 4 is an E1. So Eddie Collins does make an error. And George Kell gets on, gets a board. And I don't really know which one George Kell is, so we're going to have to do our best to identify him. I think, let's see. I mean, we could probably go by process of elimination because I don't know what George Kell looks like. <laughs> I think this is George Kell. So we're going to say that is. And he's at first. And he is on by an E4. And there are no outs. And the batter's Alan Trammell. And Alan Trammell gets a 4-2 batting right. That's going to be a strikeout. Wait a minute. Nope. Fly ball left. Field B. So he's still out. F7. Uh, one down. Sweet Lou Whitaker. Lead off batter. He gets a 3-8. Batting against a righty. You know, batting against a lefty. That's a strikeout. Would have been a strikeout either way, and it is the third strikeout on the day for Billy Pierce. And Ty Cobb is the batter. Ty Cobb gets a 6-7 batting left. That's going to be a strikeout. So Ty Cobb striking out. And not only that, but Billy Pierce striking out. He's got four strikeouts on the day here through three innings of guys that you would think wouldn't be striking out very much at all. But they are. Uh, so we are going to the top of the fourth here. Chet Lemon up. Detroit ahead, one nothing, And uh, that's a 4-8 batting right. That's going to be a fly ball center field. One away, Chet Lemon. F8 for him. And the batter is Carlton Fitch. 1-4, that is going to be a strikeout. And that's the first strikeout, surprisingly, for McLean on the day. And Lewis Robert is up, and he gets a 1-10, and that's going to be a strikeout. So, the uh, that's the second strikeout for... No, actually, he had another one. McLean had another one. Yeah, that's his third, that's McLean's third strikeout, I stand corrected. And we go to the bottom of the fourth with Harry Heilman, the batter, here in a one nothing game. Detroit ahead, one nothing, And that is a 4-8 for a righty, and that is going to be a strikeout. One away. So Heilman strikes out to lead off the Tigers' fourth. We go to the... the uh, we go to Miguel Cabrera with that. Right? He gets a 311, and that is going to be a single. So we have to find Cabrera over here. And there he 
there he is. So he is aboard. Cabrera with a single. That is the third hit allowed by Pierce. And Fothergill is the batter. He gets a 4-9 batting right. And that's going to be a strikeout. So there's two down. And Pierce is, I mean, he is smoking people here. That's his fifth strikeout. L. Kaline. L. Kaline getting a 3 9. That is going to be a walk. So Kaline, we go find Kaline. We move uh, Cabrera to second. And we see, I can see a L. Kaline right there. So we'll put him on base. Pierce with his second walk of the day, and Lance Parrish the bat. And he gets a 3-6, and that is a strikeout. Pierce striking out his sixth guy. Now, of course, this is back in the day. These Both of these pitchers were from back in the day, so they can go the entire game. Both of these guys can. We go to the top of the fifth. It is... Um, Still one nothing, and Robin Ventura is the batter against McLean, and that is a five nine batting left. That is going to be a pop out to first base. One down. Luke Appling up. Luke Appling gets a two seven. That is going to be a fly a fly to left. This time he flies out to the other outfield. He flew out to right the two previous times. And Joe Jackson, Shoeless Joe, is up. And he gets a 5-7. That's going to be a hit, I believe. It is going to be a single. So Joe Jackson is aboard. We'll have to go get the Shoeless one. And he is aboard. So there's two down and Jackson aboard. McLean having go up, giving up his fifth hit already. And Frank Thomas. And Frank Thomas gets a 5-5 five, five batting right. Probably going to be an out. It is a fly ball to center field. No runs for the White Sox in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We're going to take Shoeless Joe off the bases. And George Kell is the batter for Detroit here in the bottom of the fifth of a one nothing game. 5-8 batting right. That is going to be a ground ball second. He is a second base 1-E23. That is a 20, so it's probably an out. And it is. So Kell goes four to one or four to four to four to three. One away. Could have been four to one, but um Trammell is up. That is a five seven batting right. And that's gonna be a strikeout. And that is another strike. That's a seventh strikeout for Pierce, and yeah, I mean, he, he's a starter nine. Both of these guys are starter nines, so they don't even get tired till the ninth. And Lou Whitaker is up with two down. And he gets a 2-5, and that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Four to three. Uh, no runs come in for Detroit in the fifth. We go to the sixth. It is one nothing. One nothing here. The White Sox just can't break through on McLean, even though arguably you might say Pierce has pitched better. Canerco is up. Canerco gets a 4 4 batting right, and that's going to be a fly ball to left. Collins is the batter with one down. That is a 2-3, and that's going to be a walk. 
So Collins gets aboard with a walk. We got to go find Collins, and he's right here. He's right there. And there he is. That's his first time aboard for the day. A walk by McLean, and that's the first walk issued by McLean. Chet Lemon up. Chet Lemon gets a 3-9, and that is going to be a walk. So now we've got two guys on. We're working it. And Chet Lemon, he's on for his second time. Which brings up Fisk. And Fisk gets a 4-8 batting right. And that is going to be a fly ball center field. So there's two down. Critical at bat here for Lewis Robert. And Lewis Robert has been on. He's been hit by a pitch. He gets a 2-7. And that's going to be a ground ball to second. So he goes out 4-3. And uh, no runs in the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth. In, again, a one nothing game. This is just one nothing. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have Ty Cobb. Tyrus Cobb. All these great hitters. And it's only one nothing. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. And 1-8. And that's going to be a fly ball center field by Cobb. One away. Harry Heilman is up. Harry Heilman has not been on. He struck out and hit into a double play. And he gets a 3-10. And that's going to be a fly ball. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's going to be a single. Heilman is aboard with a single. So let's go find Heilman. And there he is. So Heilman is aboard with uh, with a with a single. Pierce allowing his fourth hit of the ball game with Miguel Cabrera up, and he gets a two seven, and that is going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. So he goes six four three, and no runs come in for Detroit. That finishes them off for the sixth. And we're going to the top of the seventh in a one nothing game. And Robin Ventura, Robin High Ventura is up. And we're going to roll another dice and just take over there. 4-8 batting left against McLean. And that's going to be a fly ball to left field, one away. Luke Appling. Luke Appling gets a 5-8 batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Their second baseman is a 2-E31. That is a 6. Probably going to be an out. And it is. He goes 4-3. And we're going to Luke, or wait, no, not Luke, that was Luke Appling. So we're going to Joe Jackson. And he gets a 5-9 batting left, and that is going to be a pop-out to first base. Pop-out three, time is running out for the White Sox, but they're only down by a run. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning with Bob Fothergill batting. Uh... Yep, that's him. And he gets a 6-4 batting right. And that's going to be a fly to center. The center fielder is a 1-E11, and that's Chet Lemon. Um, and that is a 4. So a 4 and a 1 at center field is a fly ball B. So Father Gill flies out, and that brings up... Alkaline. Sweet Alkaline. 3 7. Everybody's sweet in this game. So, fly ball center field B. Or, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, 
Nope, it's uh, going to be a line out to third. Line out five, and Lance Parrish is the batter. And he gets a 3-7, and that is going to be a line out to shortstop. No runs come in for the Tigers. We go to the top of the eighth inning. This is about as intensely intense as you would want to get. Frank Thomas is up against Denny McClellan. And he gets a 2-8 and he is going to strike out. McLean striking out his fourth guy. Paul Canerco. Canerco gets a 3-7. That's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. So he goes out 6-3. And Eddie Collins is the batter. Two down. And 6-5 batting left. That is going to be a double. Double for Eddie Collins. And he just happened to be the dude that was on top. So Eddie Collins doubles. That is the first extra base hit, I believe, off of McLean. Runner at second, Chet Lemon up. 4-5, batting right. That is going to be a pop-out to the third baseman. So, hell of a game here. That's the We're going to the bottom of the eight. The Tigers are winning one nothing. And uh, they'll be leading off with um, George Kell. George Kell is the leadoff hitter for them. That is a 6-3 batting right. That's going to be a fly ball to left. Our left fielder is a 1-E-13. That is a 17. Probably going to be an out. And it is. Fly out to 7. F7. Bringing up Alan Trammell. The shortstop. And he gets a 210, and that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he's out 6 3. And Lou, sweet Lou Whitaker, is the batter with two down here in the eighth. He gets a 2 4, and that's going to be a fly to center. So this is what it all comes down to right here. The White Sox are up. They're losing one nothing. They're up in the top of the ninth. Denny McLean is pitching a shutout, a six-hit shutout. And Carlton Fisk is the batter. And he gets a 2-7, and that is going to be a single. Dang, just missed a double. So Carlton Fisk is aboard with a single. And he'll take his place at first base. Um, Lewis Robert is the batter. We're going to let Lewis Robert hit. I mean, he hit 331 in this. I've got him in the year that I've got him. He gets a 5 8 batting right, and that's going to be a ground ball second base. This could be a double play. Uh, their second baseman is a 2E13. That is a 20. 20 and 2 is going to be a double play. So there's two down. The White Sox are down to their last out. A 4 6 3 double play. And Robin Ventura up. I'm going to pinch hit for Robin Ventura. We're not going to do that. Um, <laughs> so. Let's see who comes in to pinch hit. And McLean is batting, or McLean is pitching. McLean is pitching. You know what? I'm going all out here. We're going to pinch hit Adam Dunn. And we're going to hope for this home run because that's what we need. We need a home run, and we're hoping we can get it from Dunn. 
Not a guy that hits for a high average, though. And he gets a 5-7 batting left. That will be a single, so he does get a board, though. Um, and I think I have Adam Dunn. Let's see. So let's go find him. Yeah, there he is. He gets the single. And with a man aboard, we have Luke Appling up. And he gets a 1-8, and that is against a righty. That's a single double asterisk. We have runners at the corners. The White Sox making a late, last-ditch effort to make a comeback here as Luke Appling gets a single. And sends Dunn over to third base, and Joe Jackson is, aboard, is up. And they would probably walk. No, they wouldn't because Thomas is a great hitter. So that is a 4-7 for a lefty, and that is going to be a strikeout. And that's how the game ends. So that's about as much as you could really have, have hoped for. The White Sox lose this game 1-0. Runners ended at the corners and stranded. And that is what we've got here between the all-time Tigers and the all-time White Sox.